Hi, let's learn how to play basic chords with move. For this, you can press shift and this note here to make sure you're in key and C major. You can use any key, but it has to be major if you want to follow along. It has to look like this, not like this. Using the fourth layout in key, you can learn the notes, the chords for that key, and how to make progressions that sound good using inversions. So let's get started. The first thing you have to know to make chords in move or in push is how are the notes positioned. When using the fourth layout, I like to imagine squares. This is a three by three square because that helps me think about chords in numbers. I'll lay out numbers for you here so you can understand what I'm saying. This will be the root of the note is the one. In this case it's C major, but I could be in any other key and it will be the same. It's just the one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then this is one again. So this shape here is the octave. In move, we don't have another square up here. So if you want to play notes in this octave, but then you want to go an octave higher, you can go here. In push, you had the luxury of real estate, but not in here. Obviously, you can always go an octave up here. The first chord I would like you to know is the power chord. And if you play guitar, you may know this. This is a very useful for metal uh, or rock. This is the first and the fifth. Sometimes it's played like this. So you play the same note twice because this is an octave and then in the middle you put the fifth and it always sounds sounds good. Okay, so the, the formula for the power chord is 1-5. Now let's do 1-3-5 instead. That brings us to triads. So this is a C major and the cool thing about it is that now you know it's one, three, five, but we can move this shape around. So if you want to go to the fourth chord of the C major scale, you just go to this note and then you just do the same. One, three, five, up here. And now with this, you can already play a lot of songs, a lot of pop music songs that use the triads in different ways. But stick around because I will show you a better way to use them that sound better. So let's start with the most famous chord progression, which is one, five, six, four. So this chord progression is everywhere. So it's one, five, six, four. And look how effortless it is for me to go to one another, just because I know it's one, five, six, four. Just do this shape. And now you have you have the chords. Let me show you a way you can make this same chord progression, but this time it will sound better. What I mean by sound better is that it doesn't go jumping up and down. From one to five to six, like there's a big range of notes that you're reaching. But we can change that. We can change that by using inversions. So what does an inversion mean? Let's go back to C major, the first try it of the of the scale of C major just because we're in C major but you could do this on any key and if you're in major it will always be the first chord on the scale and it will be a major chord you see I'm playing this C here no pun intended you can play the C here so okay I'm playing three five one but it's still the same it's still the same chord because it still has the same notes just that this C is one note higher. Okay, so we have the first. Let's go back to the chord progression and we say it starts with one, five. Okay, so now this doesn't jump so much. So just by doing this move here and inverting this chord, you can now play. It already sounds. It sounds different. Obviously, it's not that it is this is better than the other. Usually you want chords to not jump around because you want maybe the melody to be more prominent. So by inverting, you achieve that. It's the same chord progression, but some notes, you put together the notes like in a box and it's like, okay, I want just to use this range because I want to use uh, other parts of the range 
for other notes, for other melodies, for other arpeggios or whatever. That's why the use of inversions. Did you notice that this is one, three, five? So if you if you think about it, this is the chord down here, and you can do the chord up here because this is just one octave higher. So that means that you can play this or you can play this. This is still a C major chord. It's just that we are playing it a bit higher. Higher. Uh, I don't know how that came up. But yeah, you have this shape, this shape, and this shape. Let's pick a random chord like this. Okay. It's easy to know that you have a triangle here, and then at the tip of the triangle, you have the other triangle. And then you just fill the blanks. Okay. And then. You can also, like if you still want to play the same chord, but you want to make it bigger, you may, you can still play these notes. And you know, because these and these are the same chord, it's just an octave higher. And then you can combine them the way you want. Like I could play... And it's still the same chord progression, but just inverted you can place them in a shorter range or in a bigger range and make things bigger so that's why i wanted to make this video because it's very simple once you once you can see these squares and the relationships let's play some suspended chords but first i want to do something different let's go and do like f sharp major now you could play the same chord progression here but also let's play suspended chords if you play this chord for instance one three five instead of the three you go and play the two so this is a suspended two suspended chords feel like they want to resolve to me they fit very well on synth wave 80s vibe because So one through five, you go to one to five, and you can also invert them as any chord because you know that this is an octave higher. So this is the same chord, just higher. Look, the suspended two is very easy. But you have to remember, if you want to know the chord or the number, uh, the degree in the scale, you have to know that it's this one. Have you ever heard of a 7th or a 9th, added 9, things like that? They sound really, really complex and really advanced. They may be, but you already know 1, 3, 5, why not add the 7th? Sometimes you can also remove the 5th. Well, let's go down an octave. Yeah, seventh chord sound really nice. So as always, you can move things up and down. This is actually the seventh as well. This is, uh, let me think, yeah. The, the note is, the note that gives names to the chord is this. As you can see, as soon as you know the numbers, it's just a matter of knowing where to put them. This is an added nine. And and you can play around. So don't be afraid to experiment. But if you experiment, at least if you're making like pop music, electronic music, uh, dance music, some music that it's not complex, that you want to convey emotions, but you still want to go into that range of pop music, and chords that sound good together. It's not jazz. It's okay to experiment with, with different shapes. And I think what, 
what matters is that you still know the basics and you move around that. And I'm telling you, I'll, you'll discover a lot of nice sounding chords that work well together. And if you're doing pop, always remember, like if you're a major, I think there's a reason why why these sounds good and it's widely used um, because these three chords sound good together like the chord, the progression sound good experiment around that so let me know in the comments if you want me to clarify anything in another video or just say hi if you're still watching here i'm gonna leave you with a quote i really like never forget what you are for surely the world will not make it your strength then it can never be your weakness. Armor yourself in it, and it will never be used to hurt you. This is a quote from Game of Thrones, so thank you for watching until the end. See you in the next one.